Hey everyone, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. This week's vlog is in answer to a question sent in by Emily in our Bright Line Eating community. And she has a question that's very near and dear to my heart. She says, hi Susan, would you please speak about how for some people, binging seems to be much worse when they've been on Bright Line Eating and go off the lines than when they're simply not doing bright line eating at all. When I've broken my bright lines, it's often extreme and destructive, and I have a very hard time getting out of it and resuming. Sometimes my mind has told me that as long as I'm not able to stop break breaking the bright lines as often, then it's actually bad for me to be doing bright line eating because of how much I eat and how stressful it is on my body to be oscillating like that between the two. Therefore, I justify stopping bright line eating by saying that I may be eating off this loving food plan, but at least I'm not binging incredibly destructively. Just FYI, I'm aware that this has to do with inner conflict and the as yet hostile relationship between parts of me. I'm wanting so much to transform this thinking I have about bright line eating because I want to get back to it so much but I'm terrified of the binge cycle and not being able to make it past two weeks maximum. Could you please speak about this in a blog and give me your thoughts? M. Oh, Emily. So I first of all just want to say my heart is with you. My heart is with you. I eat like that too. That's what it looks like for me when I go off the bright lines. It is not like, oh, I'll have a small dish of ice cream. No, no. It's I eat and I eat and I eat and I eat until my stomach is distended and the next day I step on the scale and I'm seven pounds heavier. Like, I so relate to that kind of eating. That's how it is for me too. And um, I think there are other tens on the susceptibility scale out there who are nodding their head in understanding. So. Having a brain that works like that, um, I'm just so sending you love. So um, here are my thoughts about that, Emily. Um, well, first of all, it's true. It's true. When you do bright line eating for a while and then you break your bright lines, if you're high on the susceptibility scale, that's often exactly what it looks like, it is worse. It is worse. And um, I hate that. I wish that weren't the case. Um, it is the case. There's a mountain of research that shows that it's the case that dietary restraint, which means re restricting calories and you know restricting your food plan, results in a larger binge and um, a bigger what the hell effect and um, going off the plan. For me, I liken it to it. It very much feels like a rubber band that like that sticking with the bright lines can feel like stretching, stretching, stretching the rubber band, stretching, 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 and then when you let go, it's like a big, you know, it's sort of an equal and opposite reaction. The brain just is like, ah, now I need to have food. And the psychology of it is also, well, I'm gonna get back on my bright lines tomorrow, so I've gotta eat all this food now. Like, I've gotta just pack it all in. Oh, it's awful. So, um, before I ever found the 12-step program for food addiction that helped me really get my food in order finally in 2003, um, I was in another 12-step program for compulsive overeating and I was going through that, that you know, abstinence binge, abstinence binge cycle a lot and I was in exactly the place that you're in, which is uh, I got to a place where I decided this is harmful and crazy and I've got to just stop trying to achieve abstinence, I've got to stop trying to stick to bright lines and just love myself and, you know, be sane and healthy. And, and what I found, Emily, is that I gained, you know, a couple pounds a month or more steadily over time and didn't binge because I was allowing myself to eat anything at any time. My food got calmer and I was depressed and I didn't feel very vibrant in my life and my weight kept climbing. So two, two pounds a month, that's 24 pounds a year. Like that's not a sustainable life. Um, and yes, it was a calmer, 
period of time. Um, but I wasn't happy, certainly wasn't thin, certainly wasn't free. <sighs> so um, over time, I didn't find that I could stick with that method because, because I have this fire in me that wants a full actualized life. Like I, I didn't want to just resign myself to, in the 12 step program, sometimes they call it fat serenity. I, I, I didn't want to resign myself to fat serenity and, and it wasn't that serene for me. I was incredibly depressed. So I was unhealthy and depressed, but I wasn't binging. And you know, if that, so I think there are people for whom that is the answer, not being depressed and unhealthy, but letting go of bright line eating and um, just accepting, you know, maybe they're 40 pounds overweight or 20 pounds overweight or whatever they are, just accepting that and focusing on moderate health measures, you know, going for walks and eating more vegetables, letting themselves eat you know, sugar and flour, whenever. I think there are people for who, I know there are people for whom that is the solution. It wasn't a solution for me because I rely on food so heavily when I'm eating that way that my weight continues to go up and I am profoundly unhappy. So it wasn't a solution for me. That's all I can share is my own experience. And what I, have found for myself is that the freedom from bright line eating can come and those of us who are really wickedly high on the susceptibility scale when we're not able to stick to the bright lines it's a sign that you that your program is not working it's not potent enough so however you've been working bright line eating emily what i want to tell you is it's not enough like the evidence is in if you can't stick with your bright lines for longer than two weeks, you're going to have to make some modifications. And in last week's vlog, I talked about how, you know, I haven't been sticking with my bright lines very well. I am now, but for, for three months, for a while, I was not. I was periodically binging. And what that's a sign to me is that what I was doing was not enough. So I started getting more support. I started making you know, a minimum of three phone calls a day, phone calls to actual live human beings who are doing bright line eating. And I started going to some 12 step meetings again, you know, two, three meetings a week of 12 step meetings of people who have food issues. So I could sit in the room and look eye to eye with other people. And I started going to bed earlier and getting more sleep. And, you know, I've been re so, there are certain shifts that I had to make to, to get my stress down and my support up. It's a stress support metric. Now for me, I've done my inner work. I don't have inner conflict anymore like you're talking about. I mean, I've got, everyone's, you know, no one's perfect, everyone's got issues, but I'm not, I don't have inner conflict like you were mentioning. So that's another thing. Maybe that right there, Emily, that might be the crux of the issue. So. You're gonna, you're gonna have to pony up and do that inner work. And knowing you, the little bit that I do, you know, having, I know I've coached you on, on um, Bright Line Eating coaching calls, and I, I certainly know who you are, I can picture your face. Um, you strike me as someone who's willing to do that work. So I invite you to step up and do it. And do it in the context of getting enough support. What you've been doing has not been enough. So I hear in your, in, in what you wrote, it sounds to me like you are called back to the bright lines. If you're not, that's okay. That could be the answer for you is cut bait and try some other approach. Try competent eating, try intuitive eating, try some other approach. That's not what I heard in your letter now, maybe because it was a letter to me, you know, that's how you would sound, you know. So sit quietly and get real with yourself. like. Do you feel called to do bright line eating? If you do, you're gonna have to do it in a different way. You're gonna have to do it um, in, a, in an environment where you get more support, okay? So those are my thoughts. That's my experience. I hope that helps. And I'm sending you so much love. So that's the weekly vlog. 
If you have something you would like me to address in the weekly vlog, send it in. I'm at Susan at brightlineating.com and I'll see you next week.